welcome everybody to Hope for Our Times. Listen, we have a great program for you all today. Pete Garcia is joining me, and uh, it's going to be exciting. Thanks for joining me, Pete. Man, this is going to be a great day. The interesting topic for sure. Uh, topics. It, it, yes, we have some very interesting topics I'm going to ask you about. I'm going to ask you about the eclipse. I'm going to ask you about why are all the billionaires selling everything they have and building bunkers in New Zealand and, and other places. But uh, listen, just a quick uh, reminder for everybody regarding Pete. He's a retired military combat veteran, an aviator, writer, researcher, speaker, and teacher of Bible prophecy and apologetics. He has his BA in international relations and a graduate of the U.S. Army's prestigious Command and General Staff College. Pretty impressive, Pete. He's flown helicopters. He's done all kinds of things. He has quite the insight. And I didn't know this until today, Pete. I, I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't catch this before, but you contributed on Mondo Gonzalez's book regarding uh, the red heifer ritual. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, what don't I like to can... remain incognito yeah. <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> Is your name on this book anywhere? I I guess so. It's probably inside it somewhere. But you know, you know what's gonna happen if uh, I come I across. To... Next time I see Pete with a stack of books, I I mean uh, Mondo, I'm gonna go through them and open them one by one and write your name in it, and, and then and then and everybody's gonna have a handwritten Pete Garcia name in Mondo's books. That'll be great. That's right. That's right. Hey, so let's start off. We're gonna get to the X, the the eclipse. We're gonna get to. I mean, I have a lot of things to ask you about, but. Um, I just want to start here with the billionaires are selling, I mean, like the super rich, they're selling everything. What, what's your take on what do you see happening? They're building bunkers. I mean, crazy bunkers, $200 million bunkers underground. What, what's your thoughts on what's going on? Honestly, I think that they, they, you know, they didn't get to where they are now with the, the with the level of wealth and um assets and power that they they currently possess without constantly being in the know and i think that that when it comes to guys like uh, peter Thiel, um bezos um you know michael dell larry ellison uh, paul allen uh, who's a co-founder of microsoft uh, uh mark zuckerberg those guys mm -hmm. I, I would I would imagine that their their in, insight into intelligence and what things are going on in the world is probably better than most governments in the world, and I, I think that for many of them, uh, like Mark Zuckerberg, I think bought his uh, his seven hundred uh, I don't know if it's seven hundred thousand or seven hundred acres a uh, ranch in in uh, Hawaii back in the 20, 2012, 2014, somewhere in there. Uh, but I think a lot of them have been thinking for a while now that the U.S. is is heading in the wrong direction and that they're preparing for the inevitable collapse of the United States. And they want to they want to basically be somewhere safe where they can uh, ride out the, the change of uh, world orders. And uh, basically, if you've seen that movie Elysium, it's kind of like that where the rich, wealthy live up in this like, uh, I don't know, ring. Thing in the in right on the edge of space and everybody else is struggling on the earth with just barely trying to survive so i feel like a lot of them are in the know that something is coming something catastrophic and they are preparing themselves well in advance to uh get ready for that this is very interesting i, I want to ask you about why new zealand because we were both there i'm sure you have some thoughts on that and then also when, when i when i look at this it's going to take them a while to build all these bunkers. So I'm not sure how much time they project uh, that it's going to take, but certainly some are already done because are, they already have their mass. They're selling everything, though. It's not just houses. Aren't they selling other assets, yeah. too? Yeah, That's a lot of them are making these huge, huge sales in the market, Big, the biggest sales that they've had in their careers. And, and not just them, but a lot of politicians as well are making these huge sales uh, selling off a, a, a huge number of stocks and, and assets. Um, so th I, I feel like they know something's coming, and, but they're not saying. Well, I know Pelosi is, is uh, 
known to be an inside trader. So uh, we don't we do know the politicians <laughs> definitely know certain things. I would think all the people that you just mentioned would know more than everybody else knows. So it's very interesting. But why New Zealand? What do you think? I mean, you're down there by the South Pole, but uh, I mean, I've heard all kinds of things go, that have gone on on the South Pole. Um, but I'm curious yeah. as to your thoughts. Why New Zealand? I can't remember who it was. I think maybe Wendy who mentioned that New Zealand was in the Bible and she had mentioned the passage about uh, taking it to the ends of the world, uh, the gospel, you know, and so she's saying this is the end of the world or the, you know, the end, the edge of the world or whatever the phrase was she used. Um, and I think, I think that made me think of it right at that moment. I began to think this is, this is a prime spot. If you were trying to get away from the collapse of Western civilization, uh, where would you go? I mean, really the most, you want to go someplace that is isolated, that's hard to get to, uh, would take a considerable amount of resources to even uh, arrive there. And if, if global air traffic is shut down, I mean, obviously then that leaves just boats and even getting there, I think it was a three hour flight from New Zealand to Australia. So even to Australia was a, a bit of a jump. So um, I think places like that in Hawaii, where you're 500 miles from from the mainland U.S., I mean you're you're in a prime spot to uh, as long as you can uh, pacify the masses that are that are presently on those islands and those locations by pacify, I mean you know de-arm and keep them um, docile or, or you know pacified to whatever extent, then you could ride out whatever storm that's coming. Uh, to Western civilization. But, you know, it's interesting about the bunkers, though, that we see in Revelation, I think it's 615, that talks about these mighty men were hiding in, you know, underground in caves. Um, that's right. You know, when the day of that's, the that's right. wrath of the Very Lamb was coming. So Yeah, that's an interesting connection. I mean, yeah, you look at it, why would the mighty men be hiding in caves in Revelation chapter 6 unless they were already hiding in caves? That is really. Yeah, they're, that, they're, I yeah. think. I think. I think they know something's coming, and and I, and I and like I said before, they have the means and the and the resources and the wealth to uh, have a probably pretty uh, expansive intelligence network, um, and they can get a, a handle on what's coming ahead of time, so they're preparing for something. That's interesting. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to ask you about because you mentioned Hawaii and Maui, which a lot of the money that these super rich are where they bought their, their property is on, on Maui, that island. And then of course we have what happened with Lahaina. So I'm, I'm looking at it going, and then also Hawaii is, is basically, I uh, read an article two weeks ago when we were there, they're saying uh, they're not gonna allow guns there anymore. So you talk about disarming the people and everything. But let me read this from Revelation 6, because you just got me thinking when you said that, it, it, beginning of verse 12, I looked when Jesus opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth or hair, and a uh, sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, wow, and every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. Who is able to stand? That is so fascinating. I mean, when you look at what's going on, they're, they're selling everything. They're, they're buying the, they're building these bunkers in the rocks. Rich men don't go hide in rocks. And yet in Revelation chapter six, they are hiding in the caves. They're in the, they're hiding in there. Why would they, that is just, it's almost mind blowing when you start to look and go, and then they're able to admit here, we see it's in quotes. They know it's the wrath of the lamb that has come and they're trying to protect themselves from his wrath. Some of these- uh, it's, 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 Yeah, go ahead. It's fascinating to think, I was gonna say, it's fascinating to think about um, the probably the one country with the most amount of bunkers in it in the entire world is Switzerland. 
And I was watching wow. a, a documentary on this um, that they built all these tunnels and bunkers uh, during World War II because they wanted to remain a neutral country, but they also feared the Nazis coming in from the north and the Italians coming in from the south. And so they have this probably more bunkers than any, I'm seriously, more than any place in the world. And these things are ex massive and expansive uh, systems under underground subterranean complexes. Uh, but what's fascinating too is the United States has begun to embrace this idea of creating these subterranean networks, um, which we call DUMS, the Deep Underground Military Bunker Systems. And uh, they they span, um, you know, not NORAD would be the most um, well-known one system of this, but there are also some other places on the East Coast and in the uh, central parts of the United States and in, um, in the West. Um, they're all over the country, these massive subterranean systems. And I, I think they, I think they are preparing for something. And um, unfortunately for them, as it says there in Revelation 6, that the mountains are going to be moved and the islands are going to be moved. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to be underground when that, when that moving takes place. That's going to be pretty frightening. So well, you mentioned also in Switzerland, that these are in Switzerland more than any other place in the world. I can't help but think of Davos. And in fact, it's mm -hmm. in Switzerland where you have, when you start looking at these world powers and these organizations, so many of them, they're going to Switzerland, not just for Davos, but there are other meetings that they are having throughout the year. And so again, I just go back to Revelation chapter six. I mean, it's very clear. This is what they are all doing. You mentioned this going on in the United States too, that the, even the government's in on building bunkers and so forth. No, they're not going to be able to hide themselves from the wrath of the Lamb, but that's that's going to be their attempt. This is really interesting. Also, the, in some cases, they have 50-year food supply, 50 years. Yeah. So they're really going to try and hide out. It's, it's almost like when you look at it in the context of chapter 6, verse 17, they know there's a God. They don't want to admit there's a God. They're all trying to play God and as if a 50 year food supply is gonna outweigh the God of heaven anyways. It's, like, it's, uh, it's, it's it, they know something's coming, they're calling it the event, you know, the event. Um, but, he, you know, I'm not authorized to give financial advice and, and but I, here's my one piece of common sense advice. If you're interested in the markets, you're interested in those kinds of things, don't watch what they say or don't listen to what they say, watch what they do, watch where they put their money, watch when they pull out of the markets, watch when, and I'm not talking just one, I'm there, like I mentioned earlier, there's a bunch that were pulling out massive amounts, a lot of politicians. And so there are groups out there that, um, I don't know the website off the top of my head, but they all they do is they they track when politicians have these huge sell-offs and or when they buy into things because the politicians were making all this crazy money in the markets because they're passing the legislation that either uh, allows it to, to the merger to happen or denies it from happening or whatever. So who's in the know more than anybody? And this is all insider trading, but um, it's the politicians. So there are groups out there that track the, the, the market habits of politicians and they, they, they have software that basically shadows what they do. And then it, it does that for their accounts <laughs> and they're making crazy amounts of money. So, the bunkers, the pulling out of the markets and, and making these huge sell-offs, um, you know, it's it's almost reminiscent of 2016, I think it was, when we had all those CEOs stepping down from companies. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember which year it was, um, but there was a huge number. Maybe it was I 2019 remember, or something. I remember when it was early happening. 2020. Yeah. I remember when it was yeah, happening. A huge number of CEOs stepped down, and it was weird. Wasn't was that weird the same that. year that a bunch of a bunch of these executives were also committing suicide in an abnormal rate. Yep. Yeah, the, yep. The, the same year, man. Yeah. And so very strange. Well, this is, this is interesting. It just leads me to believe some, they know something very strange is happening. Very strange is happening yeah. that we should be paying attention to watch what they are doing. And again, you just opened up my mind to thinking a lot more about revelation chapter six and seeing exactly what that means. I mean, why would these great men, that's what it says, the great men of the earth hiding in the rocks. Very intriguing, because they wouldn't be hiding there unless there was a reason. Wow. Okay, <laughs> now we have an eclipse coming up. 
So yeah. I, had, I had John Haller on earlier. We were talking about it. I said, I'm going to ask Pete Garcia his thoughts on the eclipse. X marks the spot is what many have said. Um, I'm not one to put too much into things like that. However, you know, John even said, you know, we don't want to just discount it altogether. And I know, Pete, you've written some things about this in the past. Cause I, I remember them. I remember sharing one of the articles you wrote specifically about this. It was a while back. But what are your thoughts? We're looking at it. Uh, we know things are going to happen here in America anyways because of what the Bible does tell us. But what are your thoughts on this eclipse that's coming? Was it April 8th, I believe? So the first one was yeah. it 2017, the, the, the first one? And so it's, it's yeah. making a giant X. I wish I had a picture of it. I pull it up here for everybody. But um, your your thoughts on it? Well, um, we know that uh, according to the Talmud, that the 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 an eclipse, a solar eclipse, is a sign for the Gentiles, and a lunar eclipse is a sign for the Jews because of who you you know. We use the solar calendar for our, our the solar the solar. Um, calendar for our to mark our gregorian calendar mm -hmm. they use the lunar calendar for their their um their cycle their their yearly cycle uh monthly cycle so um they figured that an eclipse for the sun would be a, a sign or omen for the gentiles and then a lunar eclipse would be a sign or omen for the the jews um but we know according to the bible genesis 114 that god created the uh sun moon and stars and they were to be for to mark times and seasons, but they were also for signs. And so I went through in um, uh, just my article that I dropped on Monday, I, I wanted to define what is a sign and, okay. and what constitutes a sign. So according to the Bible, signs generally have five different purposes. They provide general information, um, like the what God uh, conveyed to Moses okay. there in Genesis 1.14. Also, the sign of the rainbow that we see in Genesis 9 between God and, and mankind uh, by courtesy of uh, Noah and his sons. Uh, we know that the signs in terms of the consistency or the constancy of the sun, moon, and stars would remain in place. And if they were to ever disappear, then Israel would disappear as a people, as we see in Jeremiah 31. So we know those aren't going to be, those aren't going to disappear. Interestingly about Genesis or Jeremiah 31, God also says, if you can explore and, and measure the foundations of the earth and the expanse of the universe, he goes, then Israel would cease to be a people from, you know, from before me. And we can't, you know, we know more about space than we know about our own oceans and about yeah. the subterranean components of the earth, even to include Antarctica and all of those places that are just buried under miles of ice. So that to me is fascinating because we know very little about space, but we even know less about the oceans. So, um, Signs also provide direction. We know that in the Exodus, uh, the Jews followed this uh, pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night. Um, the the star of Bethlehem that was pro first prophesied by Balaam in Numbers twenty four seventeen. This would be a sign of this coming Messiah, and we know that the Magi would later use this uh, to guide them to where uh, the Christ was was either born or where he, where he was as a baby. Um, we know that signs provide evidence. Um, Jesus said, you know, uh, that this, you know, the only sign that would be given to that generation that talking about the ones that were there in his presence in that day would be the sign of Jonah. And we know that Jonah was in the belly of the well or the fish, great fish for three days, uh, and three nights. And so that would be a foreshadowing of what Christ would do when he was buried. Uh, we know signs provide hope Isaiah seven fourteen. Uh, that the the virgin would we would have a child, you know, would give birth to a child, and his name would be Emmanuel. Um, we see uh, Zechariah three eight talking about the branch. He's going to talk talking about the Messiah that was coming, the sign of circumcision that Paul speaks of in Romans four, uh, verse eleven, talking about uh, that this would, uh, in terms with Abraham, he would be not just the father of a of a physical et ethnic people. Um, the great father of many nations, but also a, a kind of a spiritual father to us in that sense that we would be grafted in as Gentiles in this new entity called the church, which was both Jew and Gentile, but neither because we are one in Christ. And then we know that um, signs provide warnings. Um, Joel 2.31, Matthew 24.30, 
Acts 2, 16 through 21, which is kind of going back to, to the one passage in Joel, and then Revelation 12, 1 through 3. Um, these are all passages that speak to signs providing a, a warning to uh, the people that would be paying attention to those things at the time. So I personally think that this eclipse, um, and I and I said this back in 2017 as well, I said that I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater on this because I, I simply don't know. I don't know what this eclipse means. It could be a, a fore, foreshadowing of judgment on this nation because we know that the United States as, of America as a nation isn't in Bible prophecy. Um, so we 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 would we might still exist in some form or fashion, but be rolled up in this the beast kingdom in some form or fashion. But way, the way we are now as a constitutional republic is not going to be there. Um, so it could be a, a sign of uh, foreshadowing of judgment. It could also simply be a um, another uh, just a harbinger of things in terms of the uh, escalation of the cosmic events that are happening because they seem to be happening with more rapidity now. Not just eclipses, but these comets that are coming, uh, UFOs, UAPs, strange things that are being seen all over the skies and in the International Space Station. Uh, I mean, there's just so much happening now in, in the skies above us that, uh, to me, the eclipse is um, just one of many things that, that seems to be an escalation of the totality of things happening. So w w you look at all of it discourse, and Jesus says there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Uh, the waves will be roaring. The seas will be roaring. Men's hearts will fail them from the fear and expectation of things coming upon the earth. Would you say it's possible um, when you look at the signs, the sun, the moon, the stars. I've, that's, you know, one of the challenges I have with that is, is where Jesus actually, he singles that out, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I've thought, I, does that mean something? I mean, something like this. I've, I'm not sold out on, yes, the, this, this is a sign like that, but it does make me wonder, uh, being that those are the words that Jesus chose to use, and you just mentioned um, uh, asteroids and so forth. Let me pull up this picture for everybody to see what, what it is that we're talking about. Uh, let's see, we're gonna see, there it is. X marks the spot, so everybody can see that, Pete. So th there it is, we have August 21, 2017, the trajectory of that eclipse back then, the other one that's coming in just a, you know April 8th, just about a, a little over a month away. X marks the spot, as people say. So you look at that, it, it's, it's interesting. And, and then we, we do know from Revelation chapter six, stars are gonna fall from the sky like figs falling from a tree late in season. So when Jesus says there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, I, I'm not so sure I would just completely get rid of the idea like I probably would have uh, in the past. You know, I, I, I find it very fascinating. All of this is very fascinating. And along with the discussion we had in the first part of the program with the billionaires getting rid of all their assets and, and building bunkers underground and, and how Switzerland yeah. has more than anywhere in the world. It's all so intriguing right now. Very strange stuff is happening. Yeah, one of my uh, subscribers, and, you know, he wasn't um, wasn't trying to make any sensational claims or anything he just marked he went through the gis program and was looking at towns along the the path of totality that had any kind of biblical names and you can see um i don't know if i sent this to you or not but the uh he's got all the names listed out on that uh, on that entire path and i mean you've got tons of names that are like biblical references salem cairo egypt cairo damascus egypt, that's right. There's uh, a Damascus Jubilee, in there? Joshua, Hebron, uh, really? yeah, Damascus, I knew, I Jerusalem, knew Arkansas. Cairo. Wow. Zion, Zionsville, Hermon, Is Magog, that normal? Mars. I mean, outside of I I mean, know, Utah, I, I, Utah <laughs> has some, a lot of names like that, like Zion and so forth. Yeah. But I haven't seen like Damascus in Hebron. I mean, I, I mean, that's. I, I didn't realize that. I knew there were some. I didn't realize quite that many. That's just, I mean, I, I yeah. got to be careful, man. I'm going to start getting out into the weeds. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, it, it, it may not mean anything. It may not mean anything. Yeah. It's just 
it's, it's just interesting. It is, I will tell you what the most interesting thing to me so far is the connection that you made with them building these bunkers in Revelation chapter 6, hiding in the caves. I mean, again, it's just the kings, it's the great men of the earth, it's the rich men, the commanders. Jesus, or the Bible, singles them out as hiding in the caves. I, that's just such a trip. All right, so let, let me ask you uh, about this. You did a video a while back, Silence of the Lambs, in an article regarding that. It was, it was outstanding. But as we are watching th things watching. develop, the splintering of um, over Israel and the biblical worldview is, uh, you did that video recently with David uh, Fiorazzo, I believe. Is that right? And yeah. in there, you obviously talking about Israel. You discuss matters uh, regarding AI also. And as we look at everything develop regarding Israel, the splintering of everything, I see the splintering of the church and you look at what you did with the silence of the lambs and we see what's happening within the church and the church is just getting more and more quiet overall. But what, what are your thoughts as you look at these subjects? Well, I, I knew back on, uh, I think it was, so we were in Oklahoma October 7th and then the 8th I went back and then um, on the 8th, I was at my son's, he was at a birthday party and I was sitting out in the car. Um, I, I did a short live stream on telegram, which telegram doesn't save your live streams. I didn't, I didn't realize that until it was done, but, uh, I spoke to, whoever, you know, whoever's listening, I had 20, 30 people on there. And I said, you know, this issue is going to, it's going to fracture the church because so much of the church is um, been steeped in amillennialism and postmillennialism and preterism and idealism and all these other different views that really downplay the significance of Israel here in the last days. They don't, they don't either don't see them as a, as biblically, biblically or prophetically significant, or they don't see them as being real Jews. And I've had, I've heard yeah. well, uh, well-known Protestants come out and say, these aren't the real Jews anymore. Um, uh, so I knew that this issue with whether we support Israel or not was going to fracture the church. It's fracturing the conservative party. You've got many well-known and trusted and respected conservative uh, leaders out there and influencers who who I would agree with on 99% of you know issues, but on this issue of Israel, they don't. They, again, they don't see the prophetic significance. They see Israel. This 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 uh, war over there. They see this as it just as simply as a geopolitical issue, and they're looking at it from an America first lens, and so they're looking. They're they're basically equivocating and making the connection between Israel and Ukraine, saying we shouldn't give any money to Ukraine. We shouldn't give any money to Israel. We should worry about our own borders. I think that 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 mindset is um, with regards to Israel is is could be disastrous for us because I think that the Genesis 12, three, uh, policy from God, this divine policy is still in effect that, you know, God said, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And I think the more that we, um, try to, uh, steer Israel into some kind of disastrous, uh, peace settlement with their sworn enemies, these people that hate them have want nothing to do with them. I uh, want to destroy them. Uh, um, as a people group, I think the more we try and pressure them into that, I think it's going to cause us to um, crash against the rocks of reality. And um, so I think I think that's what's ahead for us as a nation. And I think furthermore, as a church uh, body, you know, if we just say Christendom in general, um, again, I think we're starting to see this, this great separation between um, the real church and those who are church in name only, or they're just the denomination in name only, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, they're they're uh, culturally Christian, but they're not truly born again. And I, and so that's going to be one of those issues that really divides the church here in the last days. And and it started October seventh. I think we're going to start seeing this accelerate going forward. Depending on, as I mentioned before with you, I think um, whether the Dome of the Rock or the Alex of Mosque gets destroyed. Uh, accidentally by these terrorist groups, uh, Hezbollah or Hamas or whoever that launch a missile and it accidentally strays and hits there. Um, 
I think that the, the minute that the Jews begin to decide to build or rebuild their third temple, I think that is going to be the 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 uh, straw that breaks the camel's back with this great separation between the church and those who are mm. uh, Christian in name only. And um, I think the the things like the red heifers are going to be some of those issues that that further escalate this. And we're going to see it here in the next month or so. Um, cr- very prominent Christian uh, leaders uh, coming out condemning Israel for sacrificing these heifers or, you know, however many they sacrifice. Um, and I think that that's going to be one of those other things that's going to really begin to separate us as a, uh, wow. as a body, I guess, um, here, I think, in, here in the West. I think you're right. Um, you know, very fascinating as we are watching what's going on within the state of the church. And we also have this label now Christian nationalism. And uh, so it was uh, one of uh, my friends, Pastor Jason from back in Minnesota, he showed me a video, it was on MSNBC, and the commentator uh, was asked, what is Christian nationalism? And her response was, Christian nationalism is Christians that actually believe their rights come from God. Real Christians are those who believe rights come from the government. That is wild when you think about that. And so it's, it, it, you can see what you just said totally fits with the cultural Christian. Go along with the system, as opposed to be- who, those who believe this is from God. So as we see what's developing with the red heifers, I, I, I do find it more interesting now than I ever have before. Uh, we're coming up on Passover. I'm not sure what day Passover is this year, but I know it's coming up pretty soon. And I mean, you start putting all these things together and you have prominent, as you mentioned, co- prominent Christian leaders that are already condemning Israel for the thought of sacrificing red heifers. Well, we do know, according to Daniel chapter 9, that there is going to be an animal sacrifice that begins again. So, uh, uh, Pete, I look at these things, and I think, you know, this is, we live in, this is just, it's remarkable to watch, very strange at the same time, but I would say a warning to anybody who's a genuine believer, I would say buckle up. Because the pressure to to kind of keep your mouth shut and to not press forward and to not stand with Israel is going to increase likely much more over the next weeks or even just a few months alone. I mean, it's already, the pressure is already there, but it's only going to increase. I can imagine what's going to happen, Pete, like you said, they sacrifice one or two of those red heifers which as of just a few yeah, days ago, they were still they were still good enough condition to be sacrificed. This is we live in some interesting times to say the least. Very interesting. <laughs> and and I, I wrote uh, I was trying to find it, but the uh, I want to I want to say that I wrote um, about why the Hamas or Hezbollah or these guys would attack um, Israel because one of the reasons was because uh, because of the red heifers. Um, they, right. they yeah. view that, you know, they're looking at this mm-hmm. from a, we're looking at this from the West or not we, you and I, but like the government, the leaders, all that, they look at this purely from a economic geopolitical standpoint, um, even perhaps a historical standpoint, but we look at this from the spiritual component as well. And we note that Satan, uh, is stirring up Israel's enemies and has been even long before the October 7th attack, they, they were trying to destabilize Israel to prevent them from it, from this temple uh, gaining any more momentum because they realize once this thing gets into motion, that's it, that the, this is going to start triggering the end. And they're trying to delay this as long as possible. And so I wrote this in uh, my 24, um, 2024, the year in review, which I published in December. I always do it like uh, the month ahead of the new year. And I yeah, um, project out for the next year, kind of, speculate on things. Um, I said, uh, I wrote this is so December of 2023, beginning in 2020, Satan began furiously stirring up Israel's enemies from both from without and within to a desperate attempt to politically destabilize her. And I think that because of, and I wrote, why, why is this happening? Well, it's, this was a year in 2022 when uh, the world was introduced to these five red heifers that were coming from Texas and had met the numbers 19 standards for 
uh, purification and being kosher and ready to be sacrificed. They just had to wait, I guess, for the time. And um, it's interesting to see that that one of the Hamas guys that they recorded and have just published in the last couple of weeks, he said the reason they did attack was because of these red heifers. Um, they, they view that as a direct threat to the um, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque being on the Temple Mount. They fear the Israelis are going to just, just tear them down. So I think that those temples and the Temple and the, the Dome of the Rock get destroyed. Um, I don't I don't know if it happens through a stray missile or if it happens during the earthquake that happens at the end of Gog and Magog conflict, but we can see it happening relatively soon. Yeah, this is wild. So uh, I'm on with James Cadiz this week. Uh, I think it's I think it's posting today, and he asked me a question about reading uh, Zechariah chapter 12, where all the world is gathered against Israel, Jerusalem becomes a stumbling stone so forth, right? And, and he mm -hmm. asked me, you know, as we look at Gaza, what are your thoughts that come to mind? And it really comes down to what you just said. I said, James, I don't know how it's gonna happen, but I promise you the attention and the pressure against Israel to enter into some type of peace and security agreement is going to happen. However, the attention is gonna shift from Gaza and it's gonna shift to Jerusalem. It has to because the area of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount have to become this major stumbling point. And you look at you know, what you're saying, just about this, that would make it not just a stumbling point, that would make it the stumbler. And as you already mentioned, you look at what's going on in, in churches and prominent Christian in name leaders already condemning Israel and they haven't even done it yet with the sacrifice of the red heifers. Th that would shift the yeah. attention. That would take all the attention off of everything else in the world and put it right on that. That's, it's also interesting because it's evident that everybody in the world would know something very, very unique is happening in the area of the original temple that's happening right now. Everybody would know it. Even if you're not a religious person, you would know Hey, something's going on. I mean, God just has a way of getting everybody's attention and zeroing in the, in them into his bullseye. And he says that will be the bullseye. That would make it the bullseye. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the spiritual domain is becoming, is becoming the new, um, the preeminent domain that will be driving everything like, you know, you think about the United States of America, we, um, this article that this new thing that I'm working through volumes one through four, talking about uh, revolution in military affairs, well, a revol revolution in military affairs really speaks to those game changing technologies and changes in organizational structure and tactics that revolutionize warfare in general, like the invention of gunpowder, the invention of the atomic bomb, the, uh, the the strategy of using a tactic like Blitzkrieg are things that change the nature of warfare and how we fight. And uh, well, well, I think the game changer for uh, the world writ large is gonna be prophetic. And I call this the revolution in prophetic affairs. And it starts with the rapture of the church. And from that second forward, the world is gonna go from normal to strange and from natural to supernatural overnight. And so the, the, the new domain that's going to dominate world affairs, like the U.S. has mastered land, sea, and air. We're moving into cyber warfare. We're moving into space. We're moving into subterranean uh, warfare. Um, but the new domain is going to be the spiritual domain, and I think that's going to be preeminent once the restraining ministry of the Holy Spirit is removed at the rapture with the church. And now the supernatural comes to the forefront and that's why the Antichrist and the false prophet are able to do all these lying signs and wonders. The two witnesses are able to call down fire and shoot fire out of their mouths and do all sorts of seemingly, you know, insane things. It's insane to us right now, but but a second after the rapture, that's going to become part of the normal. And so I think that that spiritual domain is going to take control, and that's going to be the new focus going forward. And so any nation and country that's not uh, lined up ahead of time for that is going to be playing a lot of catch up during the chaos in the aftermath after the rapture of the church. Pete, it's been a great time with you today. Uh, quite, quite 
insightful. I can't wait to do another program with you as soon as possible. It was just, it was just, just fantastic. Listen, everyone, I want to encourage you to share this program with all of your friends. Uh, the things we talked about today, I think, are really necessary for people to wake up to and be paying attention. Uh, pe people can find you at rev310.net. Anything else you want to sure. tell everybody as we wrap things up? Yeah, just, you know, things, you know, as crazy as 2020 has been and, and, and as crazy as the world has been since 2020, it's only going to get crazier and crazier and crazier until we are taken up out of here. Um, and so for the Christian, it's a it's a an exciting time uh, to watch Bible prophecy come into life uh, and these things being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And it's also a very hopeful time for us because we know what lies at the end of our road here, which is the blessed hope. And for those that don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, um, you're running out of time. And the world is quickly going to be thrust into a dystopian nightmare, and you do not want to be here. It is worse than any movie you've seen. Um, and, and the only way to escape that uh, horrible fate is to place your faith in Jesus Christ right now. So don't delay. Uh, now is the, the acceptable time. Uh, now Today is the day of salvation. So, so turn to Jesus and... Um, get ready because things are getting ready to rock and roll. Amen, Pete. It's so encouraging at the same time. So much a warning, but man, sir, give your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone, uh, you can join us. At the Orlando uh, Prophecy Summit is sold out in person, uh, but you can join us via live stream. A lot of wonderful speakers are going to be there. It's going to be great. I encourage you to check out the live stream. Uh, it said you will be blessed. And uh, Pete, it was such a, it was just great having you join me today. Thank you so much. Again, you can find every uh, Pete at rev310.net. Check out everything that Pete has. And uh, also, again, I would want to encourage you just like, subscribe, and share uh, this program today. And also with Pete, so go there, like, subscribe, and share his. I, I know you'll be super blessed, as many of you already are by watching that. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. See you all tomorrow. And uh, thanks, Pete. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye.